match, Croatia's first since the Yugoslav split. Tracy Grimshaw reports it will be the biggest police security operation for a soccer game in this state. It certainly wasn't a low-key arrival for the Croatian contingent at Melbourne Airport last night. Hundreds of their countrymen turned out for the start of the team's first international tour since Croatian independence. Back home, they're locked in bitter conflict with Serbian nationals. And with some 20,000 Croatians expected at Olympic Park on Sunday, any Serb aggression could turn the stands into a battleground. Police say there have been threats. We're always prepared for the worst in these circumstances when we get that sort of uh, information and intelligence and uh, we'll be in a situation where we believe that we'll be able to handle any eventuality. There's strong precedent in soccer for those police fears. Only last month English soccer fans rampaged through Malmo, Sweden and Olympic Park itself was the scene of a violent riot in 1989. But as the Socceroos trained today their only concern was to win. Captain Paul Wade appealed for calm. I suppose we should look at it, you know, uh, we should consider the worst aspects, but uh, we don't really want to. That's the last thing on our minds. We're just out there to play football and we'll leave it up to the officials, the police. A few minutes away, their opponents were loosening up, saying they had faith in Australian security forces and no interest in politics. Are the players confident that there'll be no problems? No, they're sure that uh, there'll be. They're not afraid. Come to play. But Serbian community leaders here say if there is a protest plan, they don't know about it. They don't approve of the Croatian tour, but say Serbs should simply boycott the series and barrack for Australia. The next game is in Adelaide on Wednesday, then Sydney, Sunday week. Tracy Grimshaw, National 9 News. ...to try to solve none of its problems. The Croatians' arrival in Melbourne last night was given a huge reception, but it's the reception on Sunday that has everyone concerned. Radicals in the Serbian community have threatened trouble. They plan to disrupt the match. And police are so concerned they're mounting the biggest security ever seen at a soccer match in Victoria. Sporting events of this nature are not the place. And this is not the time uh, to have that sort of behaviour. Uh, behaviour which I believe could lead to violence. Olympic Park has taken on the appearance of a fortress. Locked gates, security guards roaming the grounds. Police have refused to release details of what threats have been made, but the Serbian community has confirmed plans for a demonstration, which it has refused to sanction. This country alone has got its own hardships without this being thrusted upon the Australian community. The Serbians are upset over the continuing conflict in their former homeland, their anger heightened by Croatia's right to play under its own flag. Players from both sides have already been told to keep their cool, but the Socceroos still expect a tension you know, they're going through a, a lot of turmoil back home and if, I think uh, the soccer pitch is a great stage to prove that you are on your own now and they're standing on their own two feet. Alan Russell, 10, Eyewitness News. Back home, local Serbian community groups have described as a provocation the visit of the Croatian national soccer team which arrived in Australia last night. Police say they'll be out in full force to prevent trouble when the Croatian team plays Australia in Melbourne on Sunday. When hundreds of cheering and flag-waving fans gathered at Melbourne International Airport last night to welcome the newly formed Croatian national team, there was no indication that violence might spoil the first official soccer tour. But this morning, as the players were at training, police warned that the current conflict between Serbs and Croats could bring emotions among Australian soccer supporters to the boil. There's been uh, several threats made and... Uh, there's uh, been a number of people that have uttered uh, suggestions that there will be uh, attempts to disrupt the match. The timing of the visit of the Croatian national soccer team has created anguish among local Serbian organisations. It's absolutely wrong considering the current climate overseas and the trouble that's happening back home. Um, and it can only be a provocative gesture and only add fuel to the fire. And while police mount their tightest ever security for a soccer match at Olympic Park on Sunday, the fans are not showing much interest in the match. So far, only 2,000 tickets have been pre-sold. Wolfgang Müller, SBS News. The match failed to materialize. Jason Cameron with details. Despite threats that up to a thousand Serbian demonstrators would try to prevent supporters entering Olympic Park, not a single voice was raised in anger. And at the city square, where another anti-match protest was planned, the crowd totaled about a hundred. 
Ironically, the only incident to mar an otherwise peaceful protest was allegedly caused by a group of Croatians. A Serbian demonstrator received hand injuries when pieces of timber and concrete were thrown from a passing car. Back at Olympic Park, every person entering the ground, young and old alike, was subjected to a quick frisking by security staff. Some complained, the vast majority went along with it. I suppose it's good to be safe sort of thing, yeah. Oh, well, there's a good reason for it. Perhaps it was asking too much of some Croatian supporters to leave the national flag at home. But flag poles were definitely banned, along with alcohol and flares. Poles were confiscated and broke by security staff. But some flares did penetrate the security screen. With impeccable time, they were set off just as the teams entered the ground. Police reacted quickly, and by the match's end, there had been only two arrests. Despite the undercurrent and a biting breeze, it turned out to be a typical Sunday afternoon at the soccer. Family group made up the majority of the crowd, doing exactly what family groups always do at times like this. Jason Cameron, National 9 News. It was a disappointing game with few soaring chances and descending off. Hubby Silver with the highlights. An historic first international for Croatia, but a forgettable opening half. Australia having the better of the limited opportunities in attack. Things livened up after half-time. Djurakovic barely missing the long drive. 18 minutes into the half, Australia had Croatia backpedalling in a goal mouse scramble. Andrew Marth getting the final touch to put the Socceroos a goal ahead. Three minutes later, the game's nastiest incident, Jalicic sent off elbowing Djurakovic. Australia tried to take advantage of having an extra player on the park, but Croatia's tactics hardly made for attractive soccer. In the end, a soccer victory, but a thoroughly disappointing match. Harvey Silver National team played Australia today. The rally began peacefully, but turned violent when a small group of fans threw rocks and sticks at the demonstrators. The protesters were opposing the visit of the Croatian team during wartime. There were several minor injuries during the confrontation, but no reported incidents in the game. The Foreign Affairs Department is in teams earlier this weekend. The soccer players got home 1-0 against Croatia. But with a fistful of bookings and one Croatian player sent off, it wasn't a game for the faint-hearted. The Socceroos took control early in the game, eventually getting the first attempt at goal. They were given several chances at scoring, but failed every time in what appeared a lacklustre first half. The sides leaving the field nil all. By the second half, Australia consolidated their play. But a considerable amount of ill feeling had developed, forcing referee John Fraser to send off Croatian midfielder Josko Jelicic. Croatia received a total of four yellow cards during the game. It was in the 65th minute that the first and only goal came, after the ball bounced free from the Croatian keeper, following a corner from Mike Peterson, with Andrew Marth hitting it into the net. Security was tight at the game, but except for a flare, all was quiet and no reported violence. The teams meet again on Wednesday in Adelaide. Anticipating tension between Australian Serbs and Croats. However, the day was not incident-free. Serb demonstrators were injured during a brawl in the city. Tension was expected to brew at the soccer field, but a crowd of 6,000 vocal Croat supporters produced just one thrown flare and a few flying beer bottles, ending in two arrests. However, trouble had erupted in the city two hours earlier. A group of Australian Serbs claimed they were attacked by Croats. The Serbs were gathering for a rally against the Croat soccer visit. These people say they and a few others were injured in the brawl with weapons like these. Young fella can be big, thick and uh, hardly. The alleged attackers fled before the police arrived and although the Serbs claim they rang for help, police say they've received no complaint. Meanwhile, the Socceroos were finding the Croats more aggressive on field than expected. The game was pure physical attrition until the 62nd minute when Andrew Marth broke through to secure the test for Australia 1-0. We've showed the Australian public, even though they're not on our side, that we can play football. Overall, Australian soccer officials were relieved and pleased with the crowd reaction and hope for the same in the next two tests in Adelaide and Sydney next noon. The match happened only hours before a match between the national soccer teams of Australia and Croatia. When the Croatian national soccer team arrived in Melbourne last Friday night, they were greeted by hundreds of flag-waving fans. But the historic visit by the newly formed squad 
has angered our local Serbian community, whose members protested against the soccer tour at a rally in the city yesterday afternoon. As the demonstrators gathered, a clash erupted, punches were thrown, blocks of concrete hurled, and people struck with large pieces of timber. I saw an older man, maybe at 60, 65, falling down to the concrete. Another woman next to me was hit. You know, it just sort of happened so quick. They came prepared for a fight. While Serbs have blamed Croatian soccer fans for the attack, the accused have rejected the claims. All our investigations in the Croatian community failed to reveal anybody who participated or was involved in anything uh, that the Serbs claim happened in the city square. The clash has brought tension between the two communities to a new height. And there are fears that there could be more violence when the Croatian soccer team meets Australia for its next two matches in Sydney and Adelaide. Wolfgang Müller, SBS News.